In this video, we will discuss the conditional and the biconditional. Conditional statements can be written in the following form. If P, then Q, right? The condition happens. If P happens, then Q is sure to happen. That's the condition that we're discussing. If P, then Q, or in if P, Q form. For instance, all the following are conditional statements. If we order pizza, then we can have it delivered. If you go to the movie, you will not be able to meet us for dinner. Notice that there is not the then in there, but it's implied. If you go to the movie, then you will not be able to meet us for dinner. If n is a prime number greater than two, then n is an odd number. In any conditional statement represented by if p then q or by the if p q, the p statement is called the antecedent and the q statement is called the consequent. Anti is a prefix meaning before, so it's the one that comes first. Consequent, just like if something happens, there's a consequence, right? Something has to happen first, the antecedent, in order for the consequent to take place. So the if P, P is the antecedent, followed by Q, where Q is called the consequent. For the following exercises, identify the antecedent and the consequent in the following statements. So for each of our three sentences given here, each of our three conditional statements, if our school was this nice, I would go there more than once a week. If P, Q. If you don't get in that plane, you'll regret it. If P, Q. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. So you can notice that we're just quoting some TV shows and movies here. And so commonly when we use our language, right, we speak in these conditional statements. So let's talk about what the antecedent is. Well, the antecedent is followed by the if. Therefore, in part A, our school was this nice is the antecedent. For part B, you don't get in that plane is the antecedent. Part C, you strike me down is the antecedent, which would tell us that the consequent is whatever happens after the comma, right? For part A, I would go there more than once a week. For part B, you'll regret it. For part C, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Let's look at those answers for A, B, and C and go back and take a look here once again at our sentence structure. Jumping back to our solutions. The conditional statement, if P, then Q, can be written using the arrow notation P arrow Q. And we can read this as P implies Q, where P again is the antecedent and therefore Q is the consequent. The conditional P implies Q is false if P is true and Q is false. It is true in all other cases. So if P and Q are both true, the conditional statement is true. The only scenario where we get a false statement is if P is true and Q is false. However, if P is false and Q is true, we get a true statement. If P is false and Q is false, we get a true statement. And we'll be able to see that played out using some verbal examples. Determine the truth value of each of the following conditional statements. For parts A, B, and C, we have if 2 is an integer, then 2 is a rational number. If three is a negative number, then five is greater than seven. Part C, if five is greater than three, then two plus seven equals four. Now you may be looking at some of those uh, statements and thinking, well, that's just simply not true, right? Two plus seven equals nine. It doesn't equal four. Five is not greater than seven. Three is not a negative number. But what would these truth values be if we reference our table on the right? Consider part A first. The antecedent and the consequence, are they true or are they false? Well, in this case here, it really just depends on the consequent in this case. If the consequent is false, we need to determine if the antecedent is true. Nevertheless, if 2 is an integer, well, for part A, 2 is an integer, so that's true. Now, what about the consequent? 2 is a rational number. Well, 2 is a rational number. It can be written as a fraction, 2 over 1. So in this case here for part A, we have that true implies true. And in our row 1, we see that if we have true implies true, 
then that statement itself is true as well. We go to part B. If 3 is a negative number, then 5 is greater than 7. Well, think about part B here. 3 is a positive number. 3 is not negative, so that's false. Now, what about our consequent? 5 is greater than 7. Once again, 5 is not greater than 7. That's a false statement. However, if you have a conditional statement such as part B, where false implies false, you see there for row four, when P is false and Q is false, then P implies Q is going to be true. Part B, we get a true outcome. When false implies false, we get a true outcome. And then lastly here for part C, if five is greater than three, well, five is greater than three. So for part C, the antecedent is true. Now, what are we getting for the consequent? For part C, 2 plus 7 equals 4. That's false. Now note here for part C, we have a conditional statement where true is implying false. Look at your second row. When the antecedent is true, when the consequent is false, that conditional statement, according to row 2, is false. So here for part C, we get a false statement. Construct a truth table for the following statement. We have here that P and Q or not P implies not P. So again, to construct a truth table here, we will go to the full screen and keep in mind, right, where we're going to start and where we're going to end because there are some notations, right? Some of these symbols are going to take precedent over the other. In other words, we have to start somewhere first. And it's easiest to start where we see the P's and the Q's. Likewise, we'll find the not P's and the not Q's. Then we'll advance into the set of parentheses because the parentheses is contained inside the braces. So start innermost as you can and work your way out. Now we see here that we're introducing a new symbol here, our conditional statement. That's going to be the one that we finish on, right? That's going to be at the end of this statement. So let's start with P, Q, not P, and not P. That is P is true, true, false, false. For column one, Q is true, false, true, false. For column two, not P is false, false, true, true. For column three, not P is false, false, true, true. For column four. Inside our braces, inside parentheses, we have the or connective that we'll go with next. True or false is true. False or false is false. True or true is true, false or true is true. So that's our fourth there. Now we're gonna use our and connective to connect P with our expression in parentheses. That is, we'll use column one and column four. P and what we just found. True and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and true is false. So there is our Row five, we have taken care of everything that we need except for our conditional statement, where we're gonna end, column six. Something implies something. Everything over here, which is column five, is going to imply not P. If column five, then column four. Do those, oh, I, I, I label these incorrectly, I apologize. One, two, three, four. This should be five. This should be six, and this should be seven. Sorry about that. So we're ending on the seventh column, where our sixth column right, is representing this entire statement. If this, then this. So using six and four to create seven. True implies false. True implies false. Well, again, go back to the previous video slide where we saw there, that's the only time we're gonna get false. If T implies F, if true implies false, that statement is false. True implies false, we get false. False implies false, we get true. False implies true, we get true. False implies true, we get true. So our statement here for our truth table, F, T, T, T. Let's see how we did there. And this will take practice. 
in order to work comfortably with our conditional statements with our arrow, F T T T, we need to be able to feel pretty comfortable about which order we go. And in this case, starting with the P, Q, and not P, then working in our parentheses with the OR connective, working in our braces with the AND connective, and then lastly, working with our conditional. And you see there, TTFF, a TFFF, a TFTF, TFTT, FFTT, FTTT, and then FFTT, just to get everything aligned uh, where they need to correctly be. Construct a truth table for the following statement. P and, P implies Q, implies Q. So two conditional statements in here. We also have the and connective as well. And as always, we will start where we see our statements, right? We'll write out P and Q. P is T, T, F, F for column one. P is T, T, F, F for column two. Q is T, F, T, F for column three. All I'm doing is just taking what's over here, right? I'm just taking that. That's what P is. That's what Q is, and I'm writing them down. T, F, T, F. Here's where the other videos come into play, right? Where do we start with first? Well, what's in parentheses, right? We have braces, and within braces, we have parentheses. We want to start with the innermost expression that we can now. Um, you might say, well, you, you mentioned using ats and or, or the ands and the ors, the the conjunctions and disjunctions before the conditional statements. Let's also consider just where we need to start in terms of our grouping symbols as well, right? Working within grouping symbols. If there weren't any grouping symbols, then yes, go with whichever one takes precedence first. But in this case, the grouping symbol is just like PEMDAS, right? If this was college algebra, we'd want to work in parentheses first. And in this case, the, the, the grouping symbols within a grouping symbol is this conditional statement here. P implies Q. Well, true, true, right? True implies true. That's true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. So there is our fifth column. Now we're going to work with the braces, the and connected, the conjunction. P and what we just found here. So true and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and true is false. So there is our sixth column. Lastly here, our final column is going to be this last conditional statement here. So what we just found, column six, is going to imply column four here, right? This implies Q. So here, T implies T. True implies true is true. False implies false is true. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. So we get down to our final column here, where our conditional statement is, and we end up with a column with only true statements. Remember what we called that? We talked about that in a previous video, right? This is a tautology, right? A tautology is a statement in which you only end up with true outcomes. And here, that's all we have in our last column. So we have a tautology for our second example. An interesting thing with our conditional statement, P implies Q, is that this is actually an equivalent form to one of our disjunction expressions. That is, P implies Q, or how we could say, if P, then Q. Well, this is equivalent to the disjunction, not P or Q. Remember that for equivalent statements, we can show that they're equivalent if their final columns are the same. For P imply Q, likewise for not P or Q, we're being told that these are equivalent, but now let's actually show using our truth tables, are they actually equivalent statements? P implies Q, as we saw at the beginning of this video. Well, true implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. Now, what about this? Not P is F, F, T, T. Q is T, F, T, F. The or connective here, false or true is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. True or false is true. So TFTT, TFTT matches up. And now we can definitively say here that if P then Q or P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q, which means if they're equivalent, they're interchangeable, right? We can rewrite or interchange these symbols with one another. 
Think about it verbally. When we verbalize our expressions or our sentences, we can now see that there are equivalent ways to write certain expressions in our English language. Using our equivalent statement, write each of the following in its equivalent disjunctive form. Note for part A and B, we are being given conditional statements, if then statements, or just simply if P, Q. If I could play the guitar, I would join the band. This is an if-then statement. This is a P implies Q. How could we write this using the disjunctive form? Well, instead of writing P implies Q, write not P or Q. In other words, for part A, I cannot play the guitar or I would join the band. For part B, Cam Newton can play or uh, his team will lose. So let's see how we did there. Right, in each case, we want to see uh, if we can write the negation of the antecedent and the consequent. In other words here, for part A, if I could play the guitar becomes I cannot play the guitar, followed by or I would join the band. Likewise, for part B, if Cam Newton cannot play, well, we're going to negate that and say Cam Newton can play or his team will lose. I, I misread when I was trying to look at that. So if Cam Newton cannot play, negating that is Cam Newton can play. So Cam Newton can play or his team will lose. Now consider here the negation of the conditional. In other words, now we have an equivalent form of our conditional that P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q as we just saw. So what would happen if we negated the conditional form? Well, it's exactly the same thing as negating the disjunction. In other words, what would happen if you negated not P or Q? Well, consider that we just discussed De Morgan's laws where essentially you can distribute a negation sign over a disjunction or a conjunction. In this case here, to negate not P or Q, we will simply distribute our negation sign to not P, making it P. We will negate our uh, sign to Q, making it not Q, and we will simply switch the OR connective to the AND connective. And then that is, we now have an equivalent form for the negation of the conditional. To negate a conditional statement that is equivalent to P AND not Q. So we have an exercise. Write the negation of each conditional statement. For part A, if they pay me the money, I will sign the contract. We want to negate that. If the lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. Give you a moment there to pause the video and see what you can come up with using our equivalent statements. Write the negation of the conditional statement. Well, for part A, consider again, I'm going to go to the full screen just for a moment. And that's what we just saw here, right? If P implies Q is the same thing as not P or Q, this must mean that if we negate our conditional statement, that's the same thing as negating our equivalent statement. And by using De Morgan's laws, to negate not P becomes P. To negate the OR connective becomes the AND connective. To negate Q becomes not Q. So this is what we're looking to do here. To negate our conditional statement, we can write our sentence as thus, P and not Q. Let's think about how that works out here for parts A and B. Well, for part A, if they pay me the money, I will sign the contract. We're trying to negate that conditional statement. And as we've seen here, it's going to end up as P and not Q. In other words, they pay me the money and I did not sign the contract. Part B, the lines are parallel and they do intersect. Notice for part B, the original statement given to us, it says they do not intersect. So if we negate do not, that means do, right? Negation is kind of like the opposite. If something does not intersect, the negation or opposite of that is that they do intersect. So for part B, right, we're looking at if the lines are parallel, then they do not intersect. The negation of that conditional statement is the lines are parallel and they do intersect using this equivalency right here. The following statement, P implies Q and Q implies P, is called a biconditional 
statement and is denoted in the following form. Notice here that our arrow will be lit, uh, listed on each end of our horizontal line, right? So it looks like our arrow is pointing to both the left and to the right. So what this means is P implies Q and Q implies P. In other words, if P then Q and if Q then P. Well, instead of saying all that, our biconditional statement can be read as P if and only if Q. And now because we've defined the biconditional statement as P implies Q and Q implies P, we can say that P if and only if Q is equivalent to P implies Q and Q implies P. And using the truth table for the right side or our right statement, we can actually find the truth table for the biconditional statement. And you see there are four columns, are, um, or are four rows for the third column is TFFT. Now let's show how we got that, right? What is this? What is P implies Q and Q implies P? Well, again, we know that this is defining the biconditional statement P if and only if Q. Well, let's actually use its truth table to determine that TFFT is actually the truth table for our biconditional statement. Well, again, for P implies Q, true implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies false is true, right? Just writing our table for the conditional statement. But here we're going to switch it around. So we have to switch our thinking of which letter comes first, T or F. Q implies P. We're going to read this from right to left. True implies true is true. False implies true is true this time. Again, because I'm reading this time. If F, then T. Right? If Q, then P. False implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies false is true. If I take these two columns and join them together using the and connective, true and true is true, false and true is false, true and false is false, true and true is true. So here's where the TFFT comes into play. And now we see here that because we are using this and saying that it is equivalent to our P if and only if Q, now we have our truth table for our biconditional statement, T, F, F, T. So going back to our screen here, you now see that the truth table for the biconditional statement for P, if, and only if Q, right, as long as we list P as true, true, false, false, we list Q as true, false, true, false, we see here that true and true implies true, true and false implies false, false and true implies false, False and false implies true. So what can we gain from this? Well, we see that when both of the statements are the same, in other words, if both statements are true, the biconditional is true. At the bottom, if both statements are false, the biconditional is true because they're the same thing. But notice in the middle, if one of them is different, TF or FT, right, we're going to get a false outcome. So for the biconditional, when we think about the true table, if you're bringing two things together using the biconditional notation, both things have to be true or both things have to be false in order for this statement to be true. We will use three statements to represent the following. That is P, she will go on vacation. Q, she cannot take the train. Therefore, right, if we negated that, not Q is she can take the train. Same for R. R is she cannot get alone. So not R is she can get a loan. Write the following symbolic statements in words. For part A, P, if and only if, not Q. For part B, not R, if and only if, not P. Give you a moment to pause the video. So let's take a look here, right? For part A, P is she will go on vacation if and only if she can take the train. All right, part A, P, if and only if, not Q. She will go on vacation if and only if she can take the train. Likewise, for part B, not R is she can get a loan if and only if she will uh, not go on vacation. She can get a loan if and only if she does not go on vacation. Let P, Q, and R represent the following. Let P represent she will go on vacation. Let Q represent she cannot take the train. 
let R represent she cannot get a loan. Write the following symbolic statement. P if and only if, not R. Once again, right? P is she will go on vacation if and only if she can get a loan. She will go on vacation, that's P, if and only if she can get a loan, right? The original R is cannot, but if we negate that is she can get a loan. So she will go on vacation if and only if she can get a loan. State whether each biconditional is true or false. In other words, right, take each of the statements, determine if they are in fact uh, true statements or statements at all, uh, and find out if you get a true or a false on each side, and therefore if the biconditional is true or false. Give you a moment to pause the video here or keep watching while we discuss the solutions. For part A, consider looking at the biconditional statement as two separate conditional statements. If x plus 4 equals 7, then x equals 3. Likewise, if x equals 3, then x plus 4 equals 7. Let's read left to right first. If x plus 4 equals 7, then x equals 3. Well, that's true because there's only one solution to that equation, and that equation's solution is 3. Likewise, if x equals 3, then x plus 4 equals 7. Well, we see that if we take 3 and plug it into x, 3 plus 4 is 7. So part A is true. Let's look at part B. If x squared equals 36, then x equals 6. Likewise, if x equals 6, then x squared equals 36. Well, that's true. Right? If x equals 6, we can plug it in to x squared and get 6 squared, and 6 squared is 36. So reading that right to left is true. But what about left to right? right? If x squared equals 36, then x equals 6. That isn't telling the whole story, right? If x squared is 36, x can also equal negative 6. So you have to consider that if and only if statement, it has to be true in both directions. The left side has to imply the right side. The right side has to imply the left side. For part A, we get that. The left side does imply the right side, and the right side implies the left side. But for part B, the left side does not imply the right side. X squared equals 36 doesn't mean that X has to equal 6. That's only one of the two answers. The right side, however, implies the left side. So remember, right, if one of those is true and one of those is false, then together it's false. So for part B, we have false. For part A, we have true. Determine whether the biconditional statement is true or false. X is greater than 7 if and only if X is greater than 6. We'll read that from left to right and then read it from right to left. If X is greater than 7, then X is greater than 6. Well, that's true. Every number greater than 7 will be greater than 6. But read it from right to left. If x is greater than 6, then x is greater than 7. That's actually not true. Think about a number that's greater than 6. Well, 8, 9, and 10, sure, and they're greater than 7. But what about the number, say, 6.1? 6.1 or 6 and a quarter, 6 and a half, 6 and a third. All of these numbers are greater than 6, but they're not greater than 7. So although reading this from left to right is true, when you read it from right to left, that conditional statement is not true. So overall, our third example here is a false biconditional statement. We'll look to construct a table for the given statements. First example here, number 15, P and not Q implies the negation of P and Q. So we'll go to the full screen here as you write down the problem. And again, we have it listed to the right side. Keep in mind, right, that we have uh, some parentheses here, right? We have some, some parentheses and some grouping symbols over here, and we have that in the middle. So that seems to be what we're going to end on. So we need to determine this, determine this, and then we can bring them together using our conditional statement. Well, starting with P, starting with not Q, P and Q. True, true, false, false for first column. Negating Q, F. T, F, T for the second column. P is T, T, F, F for our third column. Q is T, F, T, F for the fourth column. So now we look left to right. The AND connective, true and false is false. True and true is true. 
false and false is false, false and true is false. That is our fifth column. Move over here, right, and I have the negation. I have the and connected, but I can't negate until I find the and, so I'll do this one next. This is our sixth column. True and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. Now I can negate that column. To negate true becomes false. To negate false is true. False becomes true. False becomes true. So now we see our eighth and final column here. Our conditional column is going to say take column five. Right? Our and connective is what's bringing all this together. This implies this. The negation is what's bringing all this together, right? We found P and Q. Then we found the connective uh, or conjunction of P and Q. Then we found the negation of our conjunction. So that's the last thing we ended on on the right. It's the last thing on the left. So five implies seven. False implies false is true. True implies true is true. False implies true is true. False implies true is true. So our eighth and final column provides us with only true outcomes. So once again, right, we found an example of a tautology. Our exercise here is that of a tautology. What about our next example? Give you a moment there for number 16. You need to pause the video. P implies Q and P, and all of that implies P. Give you a moment to write that out, and we will create the truth table for our statement for number 16. We'll look at number 16 here. As you have it written down, we'll go to our full screen. Writing out for P, Q, P, and P. True, true, false, false, column one. True, false, true, false for column two. True, true, false, false for column three. True, true, false, false for column four. See, pretty easy, at least already down to four, you know, knock down four columns. Now we're going to have a column for this symbol, column for this symbol, and a column for this symbol, and we'll be done. Where do we start first? Well, I can't bring things together until I know what I'm bringing together. Right? Instead of the, in, inside of these braces, we have parentheses, so we're working in the innermost. So this is our next step, column five. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. Next, we'll have our and connective, bringing together what we just found along with P. True and true is true. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and false is false. So there's our six. Lastly here, seven. Conditional statement says take what we just found in column six. Six implies four, right? This column here implies our P. So true implies true is true. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. False implies false is true. Once more here for number 16, we have a tautology because our final column ends in only true outcomes. Exercise 17, go back there. 17 looks very similar to 16 as you see. The only thing they switch out is they replace the P on the right side, right, the consequent. They replace the consequent P with Q. So look at 17, write it down. We'll go ahead and get started there. P, true, true, false, false, column one. Q, true, false, true, false, column two. P, true, true, false, false, column three. Q, true, false, true, false, column four. Inside the bracket, we have parentheses. We'll start there. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. So there is our fifth column. In parentheses is connected to P, right? This and P. So we're looking here at column five and column three. True and true is true. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and false is false. And that is our sixth column. Lastly here, column seven says, take your sixth column. That implies Q. So we're looking at six and four here. True implies true is true. Uh, looking at six here, false implies false is true. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. 
And again, right, we see that we have another tautology. So those examples all looking pretty similar. Could also say that because they're all tautologies, they are equivalent statements. Their final column is exactly the same. Our next three examples will involve three statements, P, Q, and R. Therefore, we will work with the eight rows for our three statements. Exercise 20, P implies not R, and Q implies not R. Give you a moment to write that down. Take a look here. Thinking about where we want to start, we have brackets, and inside our brackets we have our parentheses. I think I've been calling it braces in the, earlier in the video, but we have brackets here, and inside brackets we have parentheses. So we'll start inside of our parentheses, but I guess nevertheless we want to go ahead and start with um, our specific letters and then those negations. That is, we have P listed, uh, we have Q listed, we don't have not R or the negation of R, so we would just want to negate R as well. For P, T, 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 F, 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 column one, not R, just switching the alternating letters, F, T, F, T, F, T, F, T, for column two. For Q, writing what we have, alternating by twos, T, T, F, F, T, T, F, F. Make sure we write it like this each time when we have three statements. For P, four T's, four F's. For Q, alternate two at a time, two T's, two F's, two T's, two F's. For R, alternate one at a time, T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F. Not R, the same here. F, T, F. T, F, T, F, T, column four. So now that we're here, right, just an extension of what we've been doing, just adding more to it, right, just adding a couple more rows, no big deal there. Uh, now starting in parentheses, our, our conditional statement here, true implies false is false, true implies true is true, true implies false is false, true implies true is true, false implies false is true, false implies true is true, false implies false is true, False implies true is true. And that's column five. Now that we have column five, we have the conditional statement. We can connect that with our and Q. So we're looking at column five and column three. False and true is false. True and true is true. False and false is false. True and false is false. True and true is true. True and true is true. True and false is false. True and false is false. Notice how this can get really jumbly. That's why it's very important to label our columns and make sure that everything is trying to make uniform width as well, right? If, if over here is my fourth or my fifth uh, letter, but over here, my fifth letter is way down here, it's going to be confused when we're looking back and forth. So try to make the rows as, as uniformly spaced and columns as uniformly spaced as you can. Try to make things easier, et cetera, et cetera. So now we have the AND connective. All right, that's the last thing that we did here, column six. The AND connective brings everything together on the left side. And that implies not R. So our last column here, column seven, we're going to be looking at column six here. Column six will imply column four. So see what we get here. False implies false is true. True, oh, let's look right here. See, it's so easy to get mixed up. True implies true is true. False implies false is true. False implies true is true. Going to number five and five, true implies false is false. Going to six and six, true implies true is true. Seven and seven, false implies false is true. False implies true is true. Looks like we were just one away from our tautology there, just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. True implies false is false. So it appears here that we were so close to a tautology, but we just had one F making this not a tautology. Uh, but nevertheless, we see our outcomes for our three statements, whether they are true or false false. We'll look at number 21 here. Uh, P implies Q. And we're going to connect that with our OR connective. R and, not P. And then all of that is going to be in our bracket notation. Because all of that is going to imply R or not Q. So 
there is a lot going on here with this example. We will now go to the full board for number 21. And note again, right, that you know, to save a, you could save a little bit of writing again with, with P implies Q, I can write out my P, my four trues and four falses, but they're just right there. I'm just going to reach over and just and work with them for now. Again, I, uh, I don't want to skip this step, but the fact that P and Q are so readily available right here, I'm going to go ahead and just look at this, this arrow, right, my, my conditional statement as, as uh, the first column. True, see, just looking at P and Q, right? P and Q, true implies true is true. True implies true is true. True implies false is false for both of those, rows three and four. False implies true are true. False implies false um, are going to both be true as well. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And all of that represents the conditional, right? The, the arrow there. Now with this one, maybe this is where we could get a little tricky. We don't have not P readily available, right? We have P and maybe we could think in our heads, well, I'm just gonna switch what I'm working with. And that could be the case too, right? If R is true, not P is false, true and false is false. See, it can get messy. Let's go ahead and maybe write out the steps for this one here, that'll help us. R, T, F, T, F, uh, T, F, T, F. Not P, we're gonna switch up P. F, 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 T, 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 T. And now I can bring these two columns together with my and connected. True and false, false. False and false is false. True and false is false. False and false is false. True and true is true. False and true is false. True and true is true. False and true is false. So now you can tell I really am kind of a almost abandoning what we've been doing, where we kind of go through and just work with each of the letters and negations individually. Uh, but in this case here, really just, I guess, in a way, reading left to right uh, this time around. So you'll see that at the end of the day, as long as you're just doing the steps correctly, whether you are reading left to right and knowing which one takes precedent first, uh, or you're just you know going by the basics, it all will work out for us. Last one we did here, right, was column four. Now this or connected, we're all inside the braces, right, or inside the brackets right now. We used our, we found our parentheses here. We found our set of parentheses here for column four, and now we're going to bring them together in column five with our or connected here. So using one and four, true or false is true. True or false is true. False or false is false. False or false is false. True or true is true. True or false is true. True or true is true. True or false is true. So column five gives us the or connective. And before we get there, we've got to figure all this out. Now again, R, T, F, T, F, alternating. T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F. That's going to be six. Not Q, T, T, F, F, switch it around. F, F, T, T, F, F, T, T. Become seven. We'll adjoin these now for column eight, the or connective, true or false is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. True or false is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. Last one here, column nine, our conditional statement. Now think about again, what takes precedent over here? It's the or connective, it's five. Right, column five, is going to, because column five brings together everything in the brackets over here, column five is going to imply column eight, because over here in parentheses, column eight brings it all together. So five implies eight. So we'll keep that in mind. True implies true, which is true. True implies false, which is false. False implies true, which is true. False implies anything, right? False implies true is true. False implies false is false. So when you start off with false on an implication statement, it's always going to end up being true. So let's keep going through here, right? The fourth one, false implies true is true. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. True implies true is true. True implies true is true. So TF, TT, TF, TT. Pretty interesting there. Um, 
they kind of alternated in sequences of four, TFTT, TFTT. Uh, but once again, you see here, our final column is gonna be that conditional statement that brings together the left side with the right side. So that's our final column there. And we'll look at one more example here for the following uh, power slide, PowerPoint slide. We have P and R implies not Q, which will imply R or Q. I'll give you a moment there to write this down and we will begin constructing our truth table. So we see here for number 24, go to the full screen here. Uh, I'm not looking to skip any steps on this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and write out our columns for P, R, not Q, R, Q. So got my five columns for the uh, regular letters, P, R, R, Q, and then even the not Q as well. So where do we start? We have brackets on the left, parentheses inside brackets. Let's start inside parentheses. Implies, T implies false, or true implies false is false. False implies false is true. True implies true is true. False implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies false is true. True implies true is true. False implies true is true, giving us our column six. Now in the braces, or in the brackets, excuse me, the and connective, we are connecting the P, which is column one, with our conditional statement, column six. So looking at one and six here. True and false is false. True and true is true. True and true is true. True and true is true. False and false is false. False and true is false. False and true is false. False and true is false, giving us our column seven. Before we can use this statement, we need to know what are we trying to imply. So we got to determine this over here first. True or true is true. False or true is true. True or false is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. See, I got out, out of hand over here. True or false is true, false or false is false. This is our eighth column. So lastly, our ninth and final column, our imply statement, what are we implying over here? Well, that is our column seven. Our column seven, the and connective brings everything together over here. Column eight brings everything over here. The implication symbol, the last thing that we'll work with, brings everything together. Column seven implies column eight. So let's see what we can come up with here. Looking at column seven and eight. False implies true is true. True implies true is true. Uh, true implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implies true is true. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. So again, almost getting that tautology However, we have one F that's showing up. So this is not a tautology, but we see here true, 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 false, true, 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 true. And we have here our truth table for the following statement for number 24. Construct a truth table for each statement to determine if the statements are equivalent. P implies not R. Likewise, we have R or not P. So what we're going to do here, let me go to the full screen. P implies not R. R or not P. Now, normally when we only have two statements, we're working with P and Q. In this case here, notice that for each of the statements, we're only given two letters, which means we only have two statements that are simple to work with. So instead of having the eight rows for P implies not R, only two letters are present. So when you only have two simple statements, remember that there's only four possibilities. So we'll get four rows. Likewise, for R or not P, we're just looking at the same two simple statements, P as well as R. Now we have a negation of R. So remember what that means, right? 
If P is given to us, P is true, true, false, false. If R is TFTF, not R is FTFT. -T. Now we're going to bring them together in that third and final column with the implication statement. True implies false is false. True implies true is true. False implies false is true. False implies true is true. So that's what our truth table looks like for our first statement. The second statement, R is T, F, T, F. Not P is F, F, T, T. Columns one and two. So to find column three, we use the disjunction, the or connective. True or false is true. And I can stop right there. They're already not alike. These are not equivalent because I've already found one counterexample. But to finish this off, false or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. All right, so we see here, although there are some similarities, we have found one difference. And you only have to find one difference. In this case here, right, the question was determine if they are equivalent. In this case here, for number 35, they are not equivalent. Their truth tables are not identically the same. What about number 57? We want to show here that not P implies P or R. Is it or is it not the same as R? Now, once again, we only have two simple statements, P as well as R. So we only have the four rows to work with. So I'll do some erasing here. And we will write up these two statements. The first one, not P, implying, it implies what? P or R. And then the other one is just simply R. We know what R looks like. It's TFTF. -TF. So we're just trying to see, does this match up with TF, TF? So we'll go to the full screen. Not P is F, F, T, T. P, again, in this case here, I'll jump a step here because we know P is TTFF. We know that R is TF, TF. So the disjunction, the or connective, true or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. So the conditional, the arrow, is going to be our third and final column. False implies true is true. False implies true is true. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. So once again, as you see there, right, for this example, these two truth tables are not the same. So these are not equivalent statements. What about our last example? Number 59, we have P, Q, and R all involved here. So we're going to have to get rid of the four rows. We'll have to go back to our eight rows here because we have three simple statements. Give you a moment here to pause the video to create your eight rows correctly, and then we can determine if these two statements are equivalent or not equivalent. Looking here at number 59, I'm going to go ahead and go to the full screen here. I want to see if this statement is equivalent to this statement. Well, we see that P is given by our four T's and four F's. So we'll write that out. Column one. Q or R. Now, again, we can list out Q individually, list out R individually, and then find the disjunction or the OR connective. But Q and R are sitting right next to each other right here. I'm going to take advantage of that. True or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. Now we're here. True or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. Now what does this imply? P implies the or connective. So one implies two. True implies true is true. True implies true is true. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true. False implied true is true. False implied true is true. False implied true. Oh, I got out of hand here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. True, 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 false is false. False implies true is true. False implied true is true. False implied true is true. And then lastly, sorry, false implied false is true. I'm going to scoot this one down just a little bit. Notice here, right, false implied anything is always true, right? False implied true was true. False implied false was true. So anytime F goes first, you're always guaranteed that that's going to 
have a true outcome. So that's our third column. That's our last one, right? That's what our truth table looks like for this following statement. We want to know, does this match up over here? Well, to find P implies Q, we use these first two columns over here, right? True implies true is true. True implies true is true. Again, looking only at the first two columns. True implies false for each are false. False implies true. False implies true are both true. False implies false. False implies false are also true. For P implies R, now again, we're going to look at the first and third columns. For P implies R, true implies true is true. True implies false is false. True implies true is true. True implies false is false. Now notice this, right? For the rest of them, F comes first. P implies R. F implies T. F implies F. F implies T. F implies F. When F is first, when F is the antecedent of this conditional statement, they're all going to be true. False implies true is true. False implies true is true. False implies false is true. And false implies false is true. Again, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the or connected, right? Bringing these two together for our third column. True or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. 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 You take a look at that they match up exactly, right? So we can say now definitively that these two statements are in fact equivalent statements. And I'm gonna make that marking up there to show that that left side has a truth table that's exactly the same outcome, right? The final column for the truth table is exactly the same. TTTF, TTTT, TTTF, TTTT. Therefore, they are equivalent statements.